Alley. Walls collapse. There's a bowling alley. One whole side of the wall has collapsed. We can actually look in across the lanes, uh, the bowling alley lanes, uh, where the ceiling had collapsed on top of some of the lanes also. Uh, uh, the bowling alley itself uh, was intact on three sides, but as you came around to the side that had been uh, affected by the earthquake, the whole side of the building had collapsed outward. The ceiling had collapsed down on top of the bowling lanes themselves, and the and ceiling uh, debris was scattered throughout. Luckily, of course, because of the time of the earthquake when it hit, uh, no one was in there bowling at 4.58 this morning. Uh, er, other damage uh, throughout the Yucca Valley and Joshua Tree area were uh, cinder block walls collapsed, uh, sides of buildings being braced up by the owners, um, some shifting of foundations. Now, now, Kate, was this can be considered a second earthquake? This would be considered a second earthquake. Why is that? And well, because it's in the, not in the same geographic location. Is this unusual, Doctor? Yes. Let it finish. The, let it finish. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm finished. Um, it is unusual, but not that unusual, to have an earthquake. Um, the change in strain that accompanies an earthquake on one fault change the strain enough on another on nearby fault to trigger it. Uh, another example of that would be the Whittier Narrows earthquake, where the aftershock that happened a few days after the main shock was on a different fault. Are we going um, to suffer now from aftershocks from two different fault lines? Will it be double? The well, we'll probably see aftershocks from both. Right. Was this uh, uh, Kate, this, this one was described. Was it, was it apparent, on apparently not on the San Andreas, but it's not that far away. It's between far? five and ten miles away. So it's going to trigger an alert for something. Um, like we will be to you on that. Kate, was this? Could you describe this as a shallow quake? In other words, it's not as deep, but higher up. We don't know what the depth was at this point. Uh, we don't have that information. It was. It was mentioned to me that it was a shallow quake. That means it's upper all the surface. Earth, almost all earthquakes in California are shallow by worldwide standards. The first quake. Um, the now this quake. one was. The first quake. Most oh, almost all of our quakes are within a few miles down to about 15 miles of this from the surface. Is that similar to the situation that existed in Northern California with one quake? No, that's one another. Quake like in terms of movement. Is it? You just moved it in there. Okay, well, we're, we're going to, because this quake is close to San Andreas, there's going to be information coming out about whether there's an alert level um, for the earthquake. We don't have that information at the moment. Um, but that is an issue. But it's an issue because it's close to the San Andreas. What about the movement? The movement compared to the other one. The we, don't, we don't have the focal mechanism yet for this earthquake, so we don't know what the, uh, which direction the fault trend and how the how the motion. We don't, goes. Know, that. We don't know that. Right. I'm sorry, Doctor. Happen to be clear on, on this alert situation. The alert comes from the state of California. Yeah, the alert will come from the state if there is one. And we don't have any information about it at this point. Well, okay, let me let me go into a little bit more detail about that. When we go back to the April earthquakes, uh, there was an alert, uh, not a warning, but you know, just a pay attention alert from the state um, that because the earthquakes were close to the San Andreas, and there was some concern that they might have triggered something on the San Andreas. Um, and because this one is also close to the San Andreas, I would expect them to do something like that this time. But we don't have any information at this point on the details of that. So this was significantly closer to the San Andreas than the first one at 448? It was close to San Andreas than the one we had for this morning. How did it compare with the one in April? Um, it's a similar distance from the San Andreas, but a different part of the San Andreas. This is the Bigger Lake area as opposed to the Desert Hot Springs area. Is that the number of number the earthquakes in recent times here? Does that make significance? Does it have any significance for the fact that we've had two today? Okay, well, we don't, uh, we don't really know the significance of this, but we, are, we do look at the long-term um, frequency of earthquakes, and um, there is the seismic cycle theory, where um, as you build up over the decades, years and decades prior to a great earthquake, um, there's an increased number of large shocks over the years and decades. Okay, So it doesn't mean that there's any immediate, but it means if you're a building planner or something, uh, or an emergency planner, you would be concerned about it. Now you study earthquakes and suddenly you were in the middle of one here. What was your feeling as you felt that one at 808? Well, I was trying to hang on to the wall to get a better feeling for what the ground was doing. Um, but I was very conscious of all the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hutton, if indeed there was some kind of a triggering effect here where, where some kind of shock may have triggered one or both of these earthquakes today, uh, is it significant that 
what was triggered was more than 7.0 in magnitude in both cases, or 7.0 and higher. Is the, the strength of these relevant in, in looking at the triggering effect here in terms of what could happen in the future? Well, the size of an earth, the larger the earthquake, the larger the rearrangement of the strain. The more strain is involved, the more strain, the more the area is involved where, this, where the strain could change. Dr. Hunt, yeah, so, uh, trying to you. Okay, here's some more information that's just being handed over. The same information that I just gave you. Um, 8.04 a.m., preliminary magnitude 7.0, uh, located six miles east, southeast of Big Bear Lake. That's the same information that so we're talking about. Two separate, two separate earthquake sequences. Yeah, does this mean now, Doctor? Okay, does this mean now? Coming from Golden, Colorado, or from your people? This this information is from us, but it's very preliminary. When when we get in the Golden number, we will go with it probably. Earlier today, the national the National Service. Um, calibrated it at a higher level than you hear. Is that possible for this one as well? Okay, well the magnitudes that we do here are what we call local yeah. magnitudes and they work well for earthquakes longer, smaller than about six to six and a half. When we get up into the higher numbers, the so-called surface wave magnitude is usually better. And um, that's that's what the 7.4 was. Okay, so that's that's why as soon as we get the number from, from Golden, we will probably use it. Is there any indication, that, Kate, that earthquakes could be moving in, in a general direction? Well, it's two earthquakes is not enough to determine a trend in... in um, is there any indication yet about the length of this earthquake we have just experienced and how much that has to do with what its magnitude is? Okay, well, I can use the magnitude to guess, to tell you what the typical duration was for an earthquake of this size, and like the other one, it would be 10 to 15 seconds for the strong ground motion at the epicenter. And then when you get farther away, the waves become more rolling and longer, uh, and with longer duration. Yes. So, so it just it something seemed like it was a lot longer than that. Well, yeah, because uh, we are 100 miles away, and the... The waves have had time to spread out in time, so is they're not the all channel, concentrated. Is the channel the channel has just, gone, uh, just talked to Colorado, and they've said that they've calibrated it at a 6.0. I'm getting this through my ears. No, that's the large aftershock that happened right after this. Right. No, 6.0 was yeah. after the okay, right. another one named fault. Uh, we don't know what fault it's on yet. We do not. We do not have a focal mechanism yet, which means that we don't know what the orientation and. Um, direction of slip of the fault was, uh, so I can't, can't, you know, but it's, it's almost certainly not on the same fault. Hey, can you, know? you readdress the alert and have states and local officials in touch with you, and what would happen well, if they were